And we're just so privileged to be able to listen to the word of God. And I believe that today's message is not just timely, it's urgent, it's pressing. So we need to be ready to take action. If you are ready today to take action in your life, I want you to say, rise up. Rise up. All right. So Colossians 2, if you'll open up your Bibles, Colossians 2, verses 6 and 7 say, So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Let's close our eyes. Let's pray. Father, we come before you today with the willingness to undergo a process to be cleansed in order to be made whole. We open up our hearts and our minds to receive your word today and to put it into action. And we thank you for the love of Jesus. And we thank you for your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray and say, Amen. Amen. So the theme for this month is rise up, and it's a call to action. Now more than ever, we need to rise up because we need Jesus. So we need to rise up in faith. We need to rise up in trust. We need to rise up in thankfulness to the Lord. And that is exactly what the passage that we're going to be studying today in the Bible teaches us. So let's turn to that passage, and it's found in Luke chapter 17, and we're going to be looking at verses 11 through 19. Now it happened, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. They lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And so when he saw them, he said to them, go, show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that was, he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, were there not 10 cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, rise up, go your way, your faith has made you well. Rise up, go your way, your faith has made you well. Jesus performed many miracles, but this particular account teaches us a story of why Jesus really came here. And so let's look at the first two verses. Luke 17. We live in a fallen, broken world, right? But God loves us so much that he sent Jesus to make a way for salvation, for redemption. But before that, when sin entered the Garden of Eden, there was sin and thus separation from God. And so in Luke 17, verse 11, we read that it happened that Jesus was traveling to Jerusalem and he was in the midst, so between Samaria and Galilee. Then verse 12, then as he entered a certain village, there met him 10 men who were lepers who stood afar off, stood afar off. For us to really understand the severity of like what's going on here, uh, we need to understand what leprosy is. And I know you all have probably heard about leprosy. But let me kind of go into a little bit more detail. So leprosy is a, it's a horrible, chronic, infectious disease. Uh, it affects the skin. It affects the internal organs. Um, it presents itself with like white patches that cover the whole body. And then those patches get dry and crusty and scaly. But then they get sores, and those sores become swollen. And then they're, you know, Lepers can even be um, deformed and disfigured because the tissue is wasting away. And many times they'll lose their limbs, their extremities, because there's so much nerve damage. And so now that you have that graphic image in your head, let's thank the Lord that leprosy is curable now. Okay, so it still exists, but very minimal, but thank God that there is a cure. But now in biblical times, if you had leprosy, you essentially had a death sentence. 
And so if there was suspicion that you had leprosy, you had to enter into quarantine for one to two weeks. And if there was a confirmed case of leprosy, that person had to leave and had to be isolated and could no longer return home because they were considered unclean. It's pretty interesting, right? Considering everything that's going on right now in our world, I know that many can understand how illness and isolation can just be devastating. It can just be destructive. So then here we can understand the desperate situation that the lepers were facing. Now, all of this just explains the physical aspect of leprosy, and that's bad. But on the spiritual side, leprosy represented sin. So we see a few examples of this in the Old Testament. For instance, Miriam, Moses' sister, was struck with leprosy when she spoke against her brother, against Moses. Um, the prophet Elijah had an evil servant. His name was uh, Gehazi. And he disobeyed and was trying to get a reward that didn't belong to him. He was struck with leprosy. You have King Uzziah, who became a leper when he tried to take over the holy job of a priest. So then let's review. Speaking against authority, disobedience, pride. This is why leprosy was associated with sin. Now, Isaiah 59.2 tells us that sin separates us from God. So where there is sin, there is a separation between us and the Lord. It says, your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that you will not hear. Did, we, did you all catch this? It's our own doing that separates us from God. It's our own sin. It's our own rebellion. And so we need to be convicted. We need to feel guilty in order to bridge that gap that we have, that we cause on ourselves. And so I think that parents can kind of understand this with our children. We know something is going on, that something's not right when they go into hiding, right? So when Santiago was about two years old, and just, just a disclaimer, the story is copyrighted and I'm using it with permission. So he was, he was about two years old, and he was the biggest fan of the movie called The Sandlot. I don't know if you all are familiar with it. It's an old movie. It's about a group of young boys who love to play baseball. And so Santi was obsessed, like to the point that he would dress up like Benny the Jet Rodriguez every day for like three years. You know, from the LA Dodgers hat all the way down to the PF Flyers. And so he would memorize the lines. We had just gotten a new flat screen TV, so he would see it over and over and over and over and over and over, right? Parents, anybody other? And so one day I was cooking, I had my back to him, and then I hear a big hit, a yelp, and then I turn around and I see a baseball bat on the floor, a broken TV screen, but no little boy in sight. He had run for it and he hid from me. So you can imagine what occurred between, you know, after that. But you just rest assured, it has a happy ending because since he thought I was sending him to heaven that day, he accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior. Just kidding, baby, I love you, thank you. But now, what about us? You know, we read here in, in verse 12 that it says that the lepers stood far away from Jesus. Are we like the lepers today? Is there something that is making us keep a distance from God? Is there something that we are guilty of, that we're trying to hide from God, that we're trying to avoid God? Because we know that we are not doing something that pleases Him. And so... We have to understand that this can lead to spiritual leprosy. You know, we cannot practice sin. We cannot live in sin because that separation gets bigger and bigger. And what's scary about this is that sin can spread. Just like leprosy, it'll spread and spread until it leads to death. Yeah. 
I mean, Romans 6, 23 tells us that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. So we have to be quick to confess. We have to be quick to repent. We have to be quick to call out for mercy and forgiveness from the Lord. And that's exactly what the lepers did. And we can see that in verse 13. In Luke 17, verse 13, it says that they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. By calling him master, what they were doing is they were acknowledging the holiness, the authority of Jesus. And we must too. He said, they, they cried out for mercy. They're appealing to the only one that they knew who could heal them. They were appealing for forgiveness, for compassion. And Jesus heard their cry. And so when we hear the word of Jesus being spoken into our lives, then we are acting in faith. We're coming to him and we're believing in his word. We're believing that what he is telling us is true and we're going to obey. Because when you have faith in someone, you believe their word. When you have faith in someone, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna be comforted by their words and their guidance and you're gonna follow them because you trust and you love and you have faith in them. And so in Luke chapter 17, after the, after the lepers cry out for mercy from Jesus, verse 14 says that Jesus saw them. So Jesus sees us right where you are in the middle of nowhere, in that desert where you think that you are alone, that you are hopeless. Jesus sees us. And he told the lepers, go, show yourselves to the priests. Now the lepers had already established that they have faith in Christ. But now he was giving them a command. So if we are willing to come before the Lord and seek salvation, seek healing, seek blessing and provision, we must also be willing to follow his commandments. We cannot do one without the other. Faith and obedience are complementary to one another. We need to have them both. And now Jesus could have healed them right then and there. In Luke chapter 5, just a few chapters down, we see that Jesus healed the, the first leper that he had healed. He healed him immediately, and he touched them. But why wouldn't he do that here? And I believe that it was because the Lord wanted us to learn the power of faith. Hebrews 11:6 6 says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who diligently seek him. Amen. God longs for us to draw near to him. He wants to reward us, but our reward is not tangible. Our reward is not here. The reward is his presence. Wow. The reward is a holy confidence that he is our God, that he is our healer, that he is our provider. And so we need to cling on to faith and be obedient to the word of God, just like the lepers did. They acted in faith, even though they didn't have their miracle yet. He told them to go and they went, even though they were still lepers as they were going. Are we willing to do the same? In the second part of Luke 17, 14, it says that as they went, they were cleansed. So they are they're being obedient to the command of Jesus, and now they're on their way. And as they went, they were cleansed. Many times it's that process of as they went that is hard. That process of as you go that it gets tough. But we cannot stop halfway. We need to push through, believe in the process, and walk through that journey because that's when the miracle comes. When I was in high school, I, um, I joined this vocational program where you could become a nurse like after graduating. And so I was a junior when I joined and it was hard. It was really hard. I mean, I was like a little kid. I was thinking now that I was like Bella's age. And so it was hard and it was intimidating and I didn't like it and I wanted to quit. But my, my, my wise mother over there, she told me, that I could not give up, that I couldn't quit. And she told me with her gentle words that I better not quit and that I better finish what I started, right? 
Just kidding, Mom. I love you. I do. I love you so much. Thank you. Who is thankful for their moms who call greatness out of you, who believe and guide you, who call you to rise up to the calling that God has called you? And so my mom um, persuaded me to endure the process. And so I did, you know, and once I finished, uh, you know, I finished high school, I graduated, and then ultimately did have a career in nursing. And so during the process, I couldn't understand what was going on. But because I endured the process, because I walked in faith and in obedience, I was able to see the plan of the Lord unravel in my life. And that was that he opened my eyes to the needs of others. He opened and made me more sensitive to the hurting that are around us. You know, he cured me from self-sufficiency. And now he's entrusting me with the well-being of others. Trust your process. As you go, like the lepers as they went, as you go, just know that you are not alone. That if God gave you that command, he will see you through. And when you walk through that process, that miracle will come to pass. But we have to be patient and we have to endure, just like the lepers did. So all 10 lepers received the healing as they walked to the priests. And now they had to. Jesus told them, Jesus didn't randomly say, hey, yeah, go to the priest. Like, they'll take care of you. He knew the process because the priests were the only ones that could give you the clearance that you were healed. So they were walking, not even being healed yet, but believing that they were going to get healed, believing that they were going to get that clearance. And then apart from that, there was still, you know, the doctor would, the priest would check them out and say, okay, you're healed. But then there was still a process of cleansing that took eight days to complete. And so these ex-lepers now, they were healed, but then they got caught up and what they had to do. They got caught up in finishing off that miracle in their lives, that they missed out on something greater. And so when I read this, I, you know, I was like, oh, tisk tisk, ex lepers, tisk tisk. How can you possibly not have seen what was going on? And it's easy for us to say, because we, you know, we skip some verses and get to the end. But they didn't understand what God was trying to do for them. And we need the Lord to help us. Many times we just get stuck. We feel satisfied with the blessing. We've got the healing and we're like, this is it. This is the promised land. This is God's promise over my life. But that is incomplete. I remember when, when, um, Pepe started working more and he was, you know, climbing up that corporate ladder and I was able to stay home for a while. And I was like, yes, good. Thank you, Lord. Like I wanted to stay home and now Pepe, he's going to be the one to go and work hard and bring home that bacon. And I would remember it. Like I would remind him a lot though, that I'm like, remember how I like my bacon, extra thick, maple, hickory smoked, So then poor Pepe was like, I got this raise, but now I have to provide and I have to go. And I'm like, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. But this whole time we were neglecting each other. We were neglecting our family. We were neglecting the Lord because we were stuck in that promotion. And we didn't complete that blessing that God had in our lives. And and maybe you can relate to this, that we think like, Lord, thank you for my family. I thank you for my children. I thank you for my parents. But then all of a sudden we think we need to be successful here. So now we're just so busy between music and sports and their schedules and this and that and trips and projects that we're like, oh my gosh, it's already Friday and we didn't pray together once. Don't neglect the whole wholeness of what God wants to do in your life. Philippians 1 6 says that he who began a good work and you will bring it to completion. God is a God of completion, of fullness, of wholeness. And all 10 lepers received healing, but only one received the blessing. Let's look at Luke uh, 17, verses 14 through 19. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, 
when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Where, were there not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, rise up, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Rise up, go your way. Your faith has made you well. I imagine that the lepers, as they were walking to the priests and as they were seeing that they were being healed, that they ran and they ran faster trying to reach the priest and trying to reach their final destination of what they thought was a culmination of God's blessing. But there was one who ran, but back to Jesus. Are we willing to be like that one who that as he saw his miracle, his immediate response was to go back and worship, to go back and surrender and to give thanks. And that is what we are called to do. He didn't wait to get settled. He didn't wait those eight days. It was his instinct, his immediate response, because thankfulness is demonstrated through worship. Thankfulness is demonstrated through surrendering yourself before the presence of God. In the beginning of the story, we saw that he, when he met Jesus, he was far away. But now that separation had been broken. And not only was he able to come back to Jesus, he was able to be at his feet. At his feet. In such an intimate time of worship, in a posture of surrender. And he proclaimed his thankfulness loudly, publicly, unashamedly. He was declaring that Jesus was the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings and the, and the doctors of doctors, the healer of all things. And he was able to not just receive the physical healing. Luke 17 verse 19 says that Jesus told him, rise up, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. This, he wasn't talking about his leprosy, the outward leprosy. He was talking about a healed heart. He was talking about a healed spirit. He was talking about intimacy and closeness and relationship with him. And that needs to be our ultimate goal, not just the tangible physical thing. God's blessing goes deeper than that. We have to believe that God has more for us. And we have to be willing to go through the process of faith and obedience and break off sin in our lives so that we can reach it. Many received the healing, but only one received the blessing. Will you please stand? My prayer for you today is that you can see that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That you can see that God is the giver of every good and perfect gift. But access to the Father only comes through relationship. And we just, you know, we understand that sin separates us from God. We must repent from our sins to break that separation. We must come before the Lord in surrender. And so today, I want to invite those that know that there is sin in their lives, those that know that they have separated themselves from the love and the presence of God to make a prayer today, to come back to him and to believe that he is the one who can change, who can redeem, who can restore what the enemy has stolen. And so church, I want all of us to say this. It's a reminder of our allegiance to him, of our love and our faithfulness towards him. But then those that are doing it for the first time will see that they are not alone, that they have a family that loves and supports them and is going to be here for them. So church, let's close our eyes and let's pray. Jesus, I come before you. I am humbled that you would call me your son. And today I ask that you forgive my sins. And I believe that the sacrifice on the cross was for me. 
And today I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Now, there is celebration in heaven with even just one that makes that prayer. But I know that many of us, we just need that extra injection of faith in our lives today. And can I tell you that you can rise up in faith. You can rise up in obedience through your journey. God wants to work in you and he wants to work through you. But we have to rise up with a grateful heart so that we can receive the wholeness of Christ in our lives. So that we can receive not just a portion of God's goodness, but fullness and fullness of, of, and wellness in him. And so today, I know, I know that it, it might be so hard to be thankful right now. You know, there's so much pain, there's so much illness, there's so much loss and mourning. There's so much pain and, and isolation. You might be thinking, how, how can I possibly give thanks right now? How can I possibly thank God if this is going on in my life? But that is the key for your wholeness. That is the key for your wellness. That is the key for the complete blessing of God's plan over your life. And so church, I want us to raise our hands to heaven. And I want us to publicly declare that God is good and to publicly cry out that we give him thanks. Even if we don't understand what's going on, even if we don't understand the situation in our lives, we can come with a grateful heart and say, God, I thank you because you are still on your throne. God, I thank you because you are not done. God, I thank you because your promises are yes and amen in my life. And God, I thank you because you are true and you are a healer and you are our provider and there is no one like you. And I thank you for your presence in my life. And I thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross that has given me life and life in abundance. And today, Lord, I come before you with a grateful heart, even if it hurts, even if I don't understand, I come before you thankful. I come before you because only you are worthy. Church, the leper that came before Jesus and received the complete blessing, he surrendered completely. And he bowed down at the feet of Jesus. And I think that many of us need to do that right here, right now. We can be brave and we can kneel before his presence and we can say, God, we're so sorry that we have hurt you. We're so sorry that we have just looked at the healing. We had just looked at your promise and not the blessing. And we just come before you and we thank you. We thank you. So church, let's worship him today. Let's rise up in faith and let's thank him as we sing this together and declare that only he is worthy. You worthy of it all.